Hello and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today on this video, we're going to continue our Bible study in the book of Isaiah. And we're on chapter 5 for this book. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get started because we're going to take a look at a revelation that the Heavenly Father gave me in reference to this Bible study also. <clears throat> okay? So it's a... It begins with, now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my well-beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. Okay, and as we go forward, if you're not familiar with God using the word and term vineyard to refer to the children of Israel in the Old Testament, that's what we're going to see being uh, revealed here also. He says that he fenced it and gathered out the stones of it. And planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. He lodged and looked down that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. Okay. And again, the Heavenly Father is talking in reference to the children of Israel and how he basically uh, placed them, brought them from out of bondage, placed them in security with provision, his provision and protection all around them, gave them. Aaron and Moses to lead them and guide them in the light of goodness and mercy. And uh, now their behavior has changed. He's gone. They've gone and rebelled against God after he's given them all of these good things to cherish, show them how much he cherishes and cares about them. And but now they're walking in rebellion. He says, and now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge. I pray you between me and my vineyard. Now see how he says, and now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah. Therefore, he's saying this because he's talking in reference to them. Okay. And he says, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have done, that I have not done to it? Wherefore, when I looked at it, should bring forth grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. And now go, I tell you that I will go and do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge that is eaten, that is uh, around my vineyard and the hedge thereof and that and it shall be eaten up and I'll break down the walls around it and it shall be trodden down upon. OK, so he's saying for the children of Israel, because of their rebellion, he's going to take his hedge of protection around because that's something else, something else he had around his safety and his security. He's going to break down the walls around them. And then they'll be trodden down. Um, he's going to, uh, and then he says, and then I will lay it waste and it shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. And I will also com command the clouds that they rain no more rain upon them. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment and judgment meaning justice, okay, meaning when he looked at Judah, when he looked at the children of Israel, because that's who he's referring to as this vi this vineyard, okay, when he looked at the fruit that was growing from this vineyard, which is their uh, behavior, how they're acting, you know, the fruits, and how they're treating one another, they were uh, lying and cheating on one another, the priests, they were prophesying for gain, priests preaching for gain, I mean, there was all sorts of evil that was being done when he looked at his vineyard, okay, and decided that they were, uh, and then said that they were acting like wild grapes. They were all in rebellion, okay? And he tells us, Jeremiah explains all of what God said in reference to their behavior and how they were acting and behaving. And then he says, uh, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, justice for them, but behold, they were being oppressed. They were oppressing each other, and they were also being oppressed by the people in the land. But more than anything, they were being oppressed because, again, he's looking at his seed, which would be the children of Israel and the house of Judah. And he's seeing them oppress one another. And he says, for the right for righteousness, but behold, a cry, okay? Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. For in mine ear, says the Lord of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair, without inhabitants. Yes, ten acres of a vineyard shall yield one, one bath, and the seed of an homer shall yield an ephah. 
because he says, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till, uh, until the flame wine is flaming within them, and the harp and the violet, uh, the viol and the tar tabret and the pipe and the wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hand. So there's another problem he's speaking of that he's seeing in the mix of this vineyard. Judah and uh, Jerusalem, his pleasant plant. That's another thing he's seeing that he doesn't like that's going on. You know, they're getting up there drinking and they're having, now God doesn't mind us drink wine or liquor or whatever, but he doesn't want us to be consumed with it. And that's what they had began to do. They, he said they're getting up drinking. I mean, they drink that before they even talking to God. Okay. They're, they've made that their source of whatever, you know, whatever uh, fulfillment they were getting from it because you can get many different fulfillments for many different things. So they were getting some form of fulfillment from it. But nevertheless, God didn't like the fact that they were doing it. And he said in the mix of them doing it, they they began to uh, disregard the work of the Lord, okay? Nor the, neither consider the operation of his hands, okay? The things that he's doing, they no longer took him into consideration at all, okay? <laughs> okay, he didn't mind them partying or, you know, celebrating or having a good time, drinking or being amongst one another, and we see that all throughout the Word of God, but it was the fact that they were rising up doing that and negligent toward God, okay? Just, just, just completely oblivious to the fact that God was Lord, and nevertheless, they had uh, began to rebel against God totally and completely as being their God, okay? So then going on verse 13, it says, therefore, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude is dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and God and God, this holy God shall be sanctified in righteousness. So see how he's saying he's getting ready to bring all of them down, humble them because they've been puffed up with the pride of believing that uh, what they're doing, the behavior that they they're walking in is all right. Even though God has sent many prophets in the mix of them to tell them and to explain to them what they were doing wasn't right. So then he says, 16, verse 16, but the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and God, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. For woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were with a cart rope that say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come, that we may know it. Okay, and woe unto those that are asking for his counsel, he says, but not really considering it. Okay, and then walking in rebellion, and now you want to ask for the advice of the Lord. Woe unto that particular type of person. And Jeremiah also, we saw that Jeremiah chapter 17, we can take a look at that right quick where it actually, uh, let's see, Jeremiah 17, verse 15, he says, remember, now see, they're walking in rebellion. And even after being in rebellion and being uh, uh, warned by the prophet Jeremiah that they are walking in rebellion and God is getting ready to send forth his judgment to them, they still asking, they're still asking for a word from the Lord to the prophet, okay? And in them asking for a word from the prophet, they didn't even receive the word that the prophet gave them in reference to their behavior. Now that we saw in chapter 21 of Jeremiah. But as we take a look at this in 17, starting with verse 15, he says, Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow you. Neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before me. Now that's what uh, Jeremiah says. So be not a terror unto me, 
for thou art my hope in the day of evil. So let them be confounded that persecute me, but let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Now that's the prayer that Jeremiah says in the mix of the people asking for a word and God, and he gives them what the Lord says is the word. And they decide to place him in uh, bondage because he's telling them what thus says the Lord. Okay. So that was the prayer that he prayed unto them after that. Now we can go back over to Isaiah back into chapter five and pick up here. Let's see where did we stop off at. Okay, so we left where they were rolling to them. Okay, let's go into uh, verse 22. I'll go back to verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. That's that pride that they had begun to uh, get puffed up with. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteous, the righteousness of the righteous from him. Okay. Therefore, as the fire devours the stubble and the flame consumes the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despise the word of the Holy One of Israel, okay? So they despise God's word, okay? There's another thing. And see, all of these different things that he is uh, mentioning are all the different things that God is going over with uh, chastisement against the children of Israel for. That's what their rebelliousness consists of. And then he says, uh, verse 25, therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people and he has stretched forth his hand against them and has smitten them and the heels did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets for all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out upon them and he will lift up a sign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth and behold, they shall come and they shall come speedily. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken. For whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent, their horses' hoofs shall be counted like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion and they shall roar like young lions. Yes, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe and none shall deliver it. And in that day, now this is uh, the day of the Lord when he's talking about he allows uh, the Judah to be destroyed in Jerusalem because of their behavior. The, those that did not repent, he said that in that day, they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. And that's, again, speaking of whenever... The Heavenly Father did allow the war between King Nebuchadnezzar and the children of Israel, the house of Judah, to take place. And then upon that taking place, he confirmed to uh, King Zedekiah, king he was king of Judah, he confirmed to him that he was going to be the one that was going to fight against them because of their uh, rebellion. To his word, to his statutes, and to his laws that he created for them to follow at that particular point in time. Because I don't want us to get confused because we have a new set. Not that we don't follow after what God says in reference to uh, certain things that he did mention to the children of Israel. And as you draw closer to the Lord, he will make that clear to you. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Because just like he made his New Testament uh, covenant clear unto those that are birthed into his kingdom, he will also make that clear. As you draw near unto him, may that be your position. Every individual that comes on this platform, the Feed My Sheep Foundation, may they all draw near unto the Heavenly Father. May the Heavenly Father's Holy Spirit pull them closer and near unto them mightily and speak unto, speak unto each individual. 
Okay. So now the revelation in Jesus Christ's mighty name, I should say. Now, the revelation I want to also attach to this Bible study, which definitely uh, applies to it, is going to be taken from uh, chapter uh, 5, of course, we're in verse 1, where he says, Now will I sing my, to my beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard, for my well-beloved uh, has a vineyard and a very fruitful field. Now, if we go over to chapter 12 in the book of Mark, Chapter 12 in the, in the book of Mark, verses 1 to 11, we can see Jesus Christ gives the parable of the vineyard, okay? And it explains the vineyard in reference to the kingdom and how the Heavenly Father released certain people into the vineyard, just as the Heavenly Father released several prophets that went before the vineyard in Jerusalem, because again, the children of Israel are, are and were his vineyard, okay, at that moment in time. And as he began to uh, hear the cries from the people, he began to send people, servants, over into the vineyard. Uh, just as it states here in uh, chapter 12, verse 1, it says, He began to speak unto them the parable. This is the parable Jesus spoke. A certain man planted a vineyard set a hedge about it to dig the place for the wine fat and built a tower and let it out to the husbandman and went into a far country. And at the, at the season, he sent the husband a servant. Now see how he sent a servant that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard, just as the prophets were sent into the vineyard amongst the children of Israel, okay? That fruit, fruits of the spirit, of fruit of love, okay? They didn't receive that. OK, and so therefore, just as these servants are being stated as didn't receive uh, fruit and they caught him, beat him and sent him away empty the same way they did with the prophets that were sent before, like Jeremiah. OK, Jeremiah was beaten. Jeremiah was uh, placed into prison. And then uh, ultimately at the end after they did mistreat uh, Jeremiah, who were mainly the uh, king of Judah, who instructed and allowed it, he was also uh, mistreated as a result of that, okay? That was his vengeance. He was mistreated and his children, okay? So chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, gives us the revelation of the parable that Jesus Christ told, and it also is the revelation of Jeremiah being sent into Jerusalem amongst the children of Israel, amongst the tribe of Judah at that point in time, whenever they were in rebellion, to tell them and to forewarn them that God was coming with his judgment and for them to repent, to change, okay? And just as in this scripture in the New Testament, Jesus speaks of the parable of whenever God sent someone into the vineyard and they mistreated that particular one. And what does he say? At the end of that parable, he says, and uh, let's see here. They took him, the last servant, they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. So what shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandman and will give the vineyard. And he did destroy uh, King Zedekiah because he was the one over the vineyard. Okay. He was destroyed and will give the vineyard to others and have yet and, and have ye not read this, you read it in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner, okay, which would be Jeremiah. So this was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in our eyes, and it is, because we're reading about Jeremiah, the mighty prophet, in the word of God, okay, and how his ending was much more powerful than the ending of King Zedekiah, okay? God bless you. God be with you. That was chapter five in the book of Isaiah today and a great revelation and reference to the vineyard. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. I'll see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel.